going on guys, Subrash9, and welcome back to Custom Structures and how to get them to naturally spawn within your Minecraft world. If you missed the first episode, definitely go check that out. There's going to be a card popping up on the screen right now that you can click on to go check out that video. Basically, we got uh, this Tory gate that you see behind me to naturally spawn in our Minecraft world utilizing data packs. And in today's episode, we are going to continue to span expand on our village here. We're going to be utilizing jigsaw blocks to create roads, and if we're lucky, we may actually start getting some structures to spawn alongside the roads as well. So without further ado, let's get into preparing everything to make this all happen. All right, so here we are in front of the Tory gate. And now what we need to do is put in our jigsaw block so that we can start connecting road pieces to it and branching it out to make a village. So if you don't know anything about jigsaw blocks, basically we're gonna throw this one down real quick and do a quick little overview. Basically these jigsaw blocks are connector pieces. They're almost like Lego pieces, if you will. And they just search for the same name and target name of like objects so that they can basically connect themselves together to form structures and provide different varieties variety and stuff like that. There's a lot of things you can do with jigsaw blocks. It's absolutely crazy. So with that said, that's what this line represents is it's a connection point. There's also the arrows that show that and they also connect on these puzzle faces right here uh, together. So it's puzzle face to puzzle face basically, which is pretty cool. So to get this set up, what we need to do is come in here and then we are gonna start with the name. Now you don't have to do what I'm about to do uh, with the namespace. I like to put the namespace in here. So we're gonna call Epic Villages. And then we're going to call this uh, just streets or street. We'll just call it a street. So then I'm going to hit control A and then control C to copy that. I'm going to move it down here to the target and uh, name and then control V that in there. So it copies it. And the reason why I like to do that is just to make it organized. And then, you know, for me, when I come back later on a project, it just makes it easier to understand what is actually going on here. Um, you don't have to put this namespace. I think you can literally just do it as street, but I don't know. I just like to do it. I think it's good practice. So with that said, um, what we're going to do here is where it says turns into, this is what block, the jigsaw block actually turns into after it spawns in with the structure. So uh, for this one, I think it was a grass block that was here. So we're going to literally just put uh, grass underscore block like so, and that is pretty much ready to go. So the next thing that we do need to do, though, as well, is create a target pool inside of VS Code uh, for this to kind of basically have something to pull information from. All right, so for the target pool, what we're going to have to do is set something up in VS Code. I'm going to preemptively set it up here, and then once we go over to VS Code, we'll implement what we're about to do here. So if you think about it in VS Code, we had, if you remember from previous episode, we had basically our namespace, which was Epic Villages, and then Village Cherry, and then we had our town centers, and then our Tory Gate NBT file was in the town centers folder. We're gonna end up creating another folder that's gonna house all those streets in the same Village Cherry folder. So with that said, we should just have to do Epic, and then Villages, and then uh, Village underscore Cherry, and then a forward slash, and then we will just name the folder streets, and that's gonna house all of our streets. So then it knows to pull from, you know, all the pieces for the streets from there to basically spawn here. So that's all we need to do for this. So I'm gonna hit done here, and then to actually copy this jigsaw block to place it around, if you hit control and then you click on the middle mouse wheel, it will copy it and all the information inside of it. So now what we can do is just fly around and the only thing we're gonna have to change is the block that we're replacing. So in this case, it's gonna be dirt path here. So this, we just need to erase grass block and then go dirt underscore path so that it spawns in as a dirt, dirt path. It has everything else that we just did. And we're just gonna go around and do this to all uh, four sides. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, so now that we have that finished, we need to save this Tory gate into an NBT file again. We're gonna have to update it. So we just need to access this here. Everything stays exactly the same and we just hit save and then it should just save it. So we'll be able to access this in Epic Villages folder from last episode that's in the generated folder. And then we'll be able to copy it and then paste it into where we had our data pack that we were building on. So that is set there. So let's run over here to the streets and we're gonna start getting the streets ready as well. So I've preemptively added the jigsaw blocks on each end uh, to do everything that we need to do. We just need to update the target pool. So the way that we can do that as well is um, you could copy this and put it in there. I'm just literally gonna do this. 
uh, control A, control C, and then fly over and basically put this into the target pool name here, like so, and then click done. And we're gonna do this for all connection points on the roads. Now, for this village, we only really need four pieces. Minecraft gets kind of crazy with their vanilla stuff. I've got some structure over there where they have a whole bunch of different road pieces and things of that sort. And you can actually do that if you would like. However, I think for tutorial purposes and stuff like that, it's just going to be simple to keep four pieces. These are all basically really what you need is a straight piece, a curve piece, a T piece, and then a cross piece. So with that said, I'm going to go through and update all of these jigsaw blocks with their target pull. And I will be back to you guys once I finish with that. And one thing I did forget to highlight as well is you definitely want to make sure when you're setting this up that you are updating the name and the target name to, in our case, Epic Villages and then Street like we did over there on the Tory Gate um, as well. So now what we have to do is run through and save all of these into an NBT file. So I have this one just set up as Epic Villages Street underscore straight. So we're just going to hit save on that one. It's going to save that. We're going to fly over here to the curve piece. And I literally just have it as Epic Village Street underscore curve. We're going to hit save on that as well. And then this one I just have, I think as T, yeah, street underscore T. We're going to save that. And then for the cross here, I just literally have it as street underscore cross like that. And we are going to hit save. They are all in the Epic Villages um, folder and we can access their NBT files to copy them over to the data pack once we get into VS code. So I was gonna set up the house and get that ready as well, but I think we're doing too much right off the bat. So we're just gonna jump into VS code and basically set it up so that the Tory gate spawns with the roads and we'll test it in here and see how that goes. And then we will add the first little house structure that you see behind me right there alongside of these road pieces, which is totally gonna be awesome. So let's jump into VS code and start messing around. All right, so here we are in VS Code. Now, one thing that I do want to say that I did was I logged out of the Minecraft world and I'm just sitting on the Minecraft home screen because we are gonna have to completely reload the world when we do these changes so that we can actually see what's going on and see if these things spawn correctly. So with that said, what we're gonna do is let's head into the village underscore cherry file that's in this, the Epic Villages structures file here. And we are gonna create a new folder and we are gonna call this one streets. And this is gonna house all of our street NBT files. So we're going to start there. Now, what I'm going to do is copy and paste those street NBT files over into this folder here. So let's do that real quick. All right. So you want to navigate to where your Minecraft files are. And in this case, we're going to go to saves and then build world and then generated epic villages structures. And then here are streets and Tory gates that we just made. So I'm going to copy these streets first. I'm going to leave the Tory gate for now. I'm going to navigate back to build world and I'm going to go into data packs, epic villages, and then we're going to go to data, epic villages, structures, village cherry, and then streets. And then guess what we're going to do? Paste that stuff right in there. And then there's all of our streets. So now we have to do the same thing with a Tory gate, except we are going to put that um, into our town centers file instead. So let me back up, go to generated and epic villages, structures. We're going to copy this here. Go back to build world, epic villages, data, epic villages, structures, village cherry, and then town centers. And we are going to paste this in, replace file and destination. That might not pop up where you guys see that, but you want to replace the files basically. Um, and then that's good to go. We should have everything added and we should be able to start moving on to doing some JSON files. So let's jump back into VS code. All right, so here we are back in VS Code, and if we take a look at streets, we should see all of our NBT files that we just copied in, and then town centers, we still have our Tory gate, which updated. Um, so we're good to go there. We know that stuff is working. So the next thing that we would need to do is come over here to the template pool, and inside of Village Cherry, we're gonna create another file, and we are gonna call this one streets.json. And inside of this, I've already saved some time in have created this. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in and we'll kind of go over what's going on here. And it knows that, okay, these are all of the NBT files it is trying to access. And then what we have to do is put this as a Minecraft empty pool element here uh, by itself. What this is going to do is when the streets spawn, there's going to be a chance that it's not going to generate anything because we do want it to stop at some point. Now, Minecraft has a mechanism that does stop villages from going on infinity. 
So it's going to stop at some point, but this allows some more randomization so that our villages won't all be the same size. It's just kind of whatever Minecraft decides to do with our street spawning. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to we're going to come back and revisit these weights here in a second and talk more about that. So the next thing that we need to do is add this inside of here. Um, so it's just Epic Villages, which is going to our namespace here. This is going to the exact like street nbt file as you can see so it goes epic villages and then village cherry street and then in this case it's going to go to straight which is right here now the next most important thing for all of the streets is to do tra terrain matching this is going to allow it where it if there's any inclination the street is basically going to be an overlay so it's going to overlay on that inclination instead of like cutting into it if you understand what i'm saying if you can kind of imagine that um that that is important so we want to do that for every street here adding all of this stuff into this uh folder with the nbt file so that minecraft knows that it's pulling these exact files to formulate the village now reviewing the weights here what this is going to do is the higher the weight the more likely it is to occur so with that street uh, straights are going to be more prevalent in spawning than let's say the street cross. Now, the reason why we kind of do that is because we do want this village. This is also equal weight to this to stop at some point to give randomization, right? Street, uh, straights are, uh, you know, just straight streets. So that's naturally going to be a little bit more prevalent than like a, a curve, this, that, or the other, right? So then, when we go down here to the second weight or weight number two, um, this is more likely to occur than, you know, basically the street cross, if you kind of see what I'm saying. So the reason why we're doing that is based off of connection points as well. Um, the curve and the street the straight has only two connection points where the T has three and then the cross has four. So we kind of want to minimize the amount of connection points so that the village just doesn't have like a whole bunch of you know street crosses and it just doesn't really look right or make sense so that's kind of how the weighting works as well so the higher the number the more prevalent it is the lower the number the less prevalent it is it's more rare if you will all right so now that we've got that that is good to go and i believe we are ready to just jump into minecraft and see if we can get this to spawn in with our town center of our Tory gate and some streets connected to it. So let's go give that a shot. I'm going to save all and let's jump into Minecraft and see if it works. Alrighty, so here we are back in Minecraft and I'm going to fly over into yonder distance because this could kind of generate really big um, or it could be small. You never know. Minecraft is literally going to decide at random the size of the village and you know the roads basically so you can see some of my debris from test phases here <laughs> laying around everywhere so let's uh i think this is probably far no you know what i'm gonna back up just a little bit more this is probably far enough so how to get this to work all we need to do is the place command that we used in last episode so it's just forward slash place if i can spell we drop down the structures and then we are going to go to to do epic villages village cherry let's hit tab and once we hit enter we should see some roads let's cross our fingers boom oh i see some roads look at that so as we can see minecraft randomly generated some roads and uh built itself like a little village which is totally awesome and this just kept going off in this direction for some reason um but it's completely at random so this is all going to obviously change as these things spawn, which is totally awesome, because as you can see, we don't have any generation here on this side, and we also don't have any generation here on this side. The reason why is because Minecraft was like, you know what, I want to leave this one as empty, and we're not going to put anything here. And then they were like, oh, you know what, Minecraft's like, oh, straight road right here would be perfect. Oh, you know what, let's put a T right here on this one. And <laughs> this one's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to leave this as empty because my plan is to do this here, and it's going to run into the other one, so I'm just going to leave it here, and it's empty. Um, so that's what's cool about it is it's going to completely be random and stuff like that. So with that said, um, we're good to go. We can I'm going to uh, erase this and maybe we'll move into actually this is going smooth. We're going to we're going to put some buildings in here, guys. Let's go do that. So believe it or not, to add these structures is actually pretty much the same as these roads. There's nothing new. We just have to do 
a few extra folders and create another template pool to handle the buildings. And that's pretty much it. So, and also add the jigsaw blocks to the street. So with that said, let's, uh, let's start with the street and add the jigsaw blocks. All right. So for this, I think I'm only going to add the small structure to the straight uh, street for now. So then we can just see it work and make sure that they're spawning in and stuff correctly. I'm not going to be adding some of the bigger stuff as of yet. If you know anything about Minecraft villages, it is actually kind of complex. There's a lot of different structures and things you've got basically broken down into a few different categories. You've got your houses, um, which is just your general like residency. So just general houses, right? And then you have professions, which are like farmers, masons, uh, et cetera, right? So those have their own structures. And then you have also the kind of extras as well, which are kind of the more rare structures that spawn in vill uh, villages. So like you've got churches, libraries, stuff like that uh, as well. So we're just gonna literally focus on creating these folders when you get into VS Code. We're gonna focus on the residency portion with this just this little house but we're going to create some of the folders for the other stuff which will be in the preceding episodes after this one so of these tutorial videos so with that said um these digital blocks super simple same same concept you're literally just going to add this like so and then inside of here we're going to do the same thing with our namespace we're going to do epic villages and then in this case, Minecraft looks for building entrances by default in vanilla. So I like to use building underscore entrance. It's literally what they use over uh, yonder. You can see them when you spawn them in if you would like to do that. Um, so we're literally just going to control A this, control C, and do the same thing here, paste that in. And then I can't remember, I think this was a dirt path. So we're going to change this to dirt underscore path like so. And then for the target pool, this is where inside of our template pool, if you remember, we have our template pool, then we have the folder called village cherry, and then we have our streets currently dot JSON, and then we have our town centers dot JSON. And both of those town centers handles the town center spawning and um, or starts it. And then same thing with the streets. So now what we're gonna have to do is add one that's going to handle the buildings. So with that said, it is literally gonna be the same thing. Um, We'll go into VS Code and create this in a minute, but I'm just going to get it ready in Minecraft because why not? It's going to be Epic Villages, and then we are going to do uh, village underscore cherry, and then forward slash, and then it's going to be called buildings. So that is that. So now what we can do is uh, click done on here. This is all set up perfect. So I'm going to get rid of this here. We're going to copy this again by doing control and then middle mouse wheel. So that copies that. And then this, I believe, is this coarse dirt? Nope, it's just regular dirt. So we're going to place this in and then we're going to delete the path portion and click done. So then that way it's gonna spawn dirt. Now to prepare our house, I've kind of already got this ready with the jigsaw block. You can get fancier added staircase and stuff, but for now we're just going to have it placed as uh, cobblestone. So here we are, we've got, um, this needs to get changed to Epic Villages and not test. This is, was my mess around stuff. So we've got that. So we've got building underscore entrance, and then we just uh, we can actually leave this target pool as Minecraft empty because this is never going to be called on to generate any form of structure. This is literally just like the endpoint, so that can be literally left like that. So that's all you need to do for this connecting uh, jigsaw block for the um, the house. So with that said, we're gonna hit done. Now, what we need to do is since we're only gonna be doing this to the straight. Um, street we need to resave this again so that it comes in with the uh, jigsaw blocks so every time that you do this and add jigsaw blocks to the other streets you need to make sure that you're saving the nbt file and updating it in your data pack um so for the house we haven't saved that yet this should just be i'm going to name it common underscore house one because there are tons of different variations if i decide to go crazy with this data pack and just build on it um i could have seven like I think default Minecraft for like the planes biome, let's say, let's, let's say, I think they have like for just their small regular houses, there's like eight or nine different uh, versions that can spawn in. So, I mean, that just gives you the scale and that doesn't include the medium, the medium houses, the, the bigger houses, and also, you know, the professions that we talked about earlier. So with that said, all we need to do is just save this as is. 
So that should go into our folder as well. And uh, we're ready to jump back into VS Code and start moving some files over so that we can access them and start setting up our JSON files. So let's do that. All right, so here we are back in VS Code, and I would like to point out, again, I have logged completely out of my Minecraft world, and I'm sitting on the home screen, because, again, when we do try this, we are going to have to completely reload the world we're working in currently. So with that said, um, all we have to do now is go into Village Cherry again, make sure that this is underlined. We're going to add another folder, and we are going to call this just uh, Houses. This can literally be anything. I'm just going to name it Houses. Um, inside of Houses, we're going to create uh, two folders for now. Um, one is going to be residence and then the other is going to be professions so this is where i'm going to divide the houses and structures up to spawn in as we grow this data pack and stuff today we're not going to be using the professions this is also where you would put like extras if you have anything as uh well so we should be good to go there we've got this folder we can copy that in i'm trying to think uh that's where the house is going to go and I think that is it. All right, so let's start copying and pasting our files over. So we're gonna jump into our Minecraft files and get that done. Alrighty, so we're back in our Minecraft files. I'm going to click on save. We're gonna go into build world and then we're gonna go into generated and then epic villages, structures. And then I'm going to start with the house first. So we're gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go back to build world. We're gonna go into data packs, epic villages, data, epic villages again. We're going to structures, village cherry, and then houses, and then residence, and then we are going to paste that in like so. So there's the house. And then now we're gonna back it up and go back to build world. We're going to go to generated and then epic villages, structures. We just need the street straight. So I'm gonna copy that real quick and then go back to build world. We're going to data packs, data, epic villages, uh, structures, Village Cherry, Streets, and we are going to paste this in, and then we're going to replace the file in the destination as well. It's probably not going to pop up because my OBS is weird, but uh, yeah, so we've replaced that now. That is good to go. So this should all be updated for what we need it to do, and we can jump back into VS Code and start formulating all this stuff so that we can get some structures to spawn. So let's do it. All right, so on VS Code, we're gonna go back to the template pool. We're gonna make sure that we're in Village Cherry and we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna name this one, if you remember from when we did it in the um, jigsaw block, is buildings.json, like so, and we should be good to go. Now, I've preemptively uh, set this up, so we're just gonna copy and paste this in and we're gonna go over it just like we did with the other one. So we're gonna go over this real quick. This is literally just pointing to itself. This is basically what is inside the jigsaw block. So if you lay this out, let's say you do it in reverse and you don't put it in the jigsaw block for the uh, target pool, what you put here and how you create this right here, you just copy this and then paste this into your Minecraft jigsaw block for the target pool. So that's just pointing at itself. That's all it's really doing. Um, the weight in this case doesn't really matter. Um, for now, when you start adding more structures and things like that, yes, you can set different weights and stuff, but right now this is the only one. So we're just going to leave it as one. So once we build this list out and we have, I don't know, like four or five different houses, we can like make this one, the more common one and kind of do what we talked about here in the streets. So we're going to leave it like that. So the location is literally just pointing to exactly where the NBT file is. So in our case, it's going to Epic Villages and then Village Cherry. It's going to the houses folder. And then it's like, OK, we're going to access the residence folder. And I, did I spell that correctly? Yes, I did. Um, and then inside of here, we've got comment underscore house one dot NBT. So it knows, OK, I'm looking for this file right here. And this is what's going to spawn in the world. So in this one, um, we're gonna actually change the projection to this change from the streets to rigid because we don't really want it to change with terrain matching, right? We want this building to spawn in and if there's elevation, guess what, Minecraft, you are gonna you know, lose some blocks. We're just gonna paste our stuff right in there. Um, so that's that. Um, I think that's pretty much all that we need to worry about for now. We can get into processors a little bit later for some things. Uh, if we decide to do that, you can create some files and. Um, like a JSON file and then have it linked in here to handle some different things. Um, so with that said, we are good to go. I can just hit save all for this and we can go back into Minecraft. And if everything worked correctly, we should not only see our town center, we should see our roads and we should see some of these small houses being generated on the straight road pieces only at the moment. So without further ado, let's do it. 
Alrighty, so we're back in Minecraft. I've kind of flown uh, quite a ways away because I don't know exactly how big this is going to be. It could be small, it could be big. We don't know. Minecraft's going to figure it out. So we're going to do forward slash place and then structure. And then we are going to go to Epic Villages again, Village Cherry. And let's cross our fingers. As soon as I hit enter, we should see the town center roads and the small houses. Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's totally awesome. I love this stuff. This is so cool. So now we have the houses spawning on the straight road pieces. Everything is complete inside as well. Let's take a look. Yep. Designed like the regular small, tiny little houses. So like I said, we could switch this out to like a um, stone staircase and stuff like that. That gets really complex. So I don't I don't know. But um, yeah, as we can see, it is working. Everything's spawning on the Minecraft surface. We've got a few different houses and stuff. So as you can see now, it is literally just basically doing what we've done and then adding all of your structures into those folders and doing things like that. I will be making more in-depth tutorial videos explaining some of that stuff as well. So keep an eye out for those. If you're interested in following along for all of that stuff, definitely make sure you're subscribing. Also drop your support on this video with a like, leave a comment, these videos do take a little bit of time to do because not only am I creating all these structures, I'm also, you know, testing things out to make sure that when I present it to you, it's going to work properly, stuff like that. So I'm super excited. We can get into a whole bunch of stuff. We can get into at this point, not only spawning buildings, we can create uh, rare buildings. We can create rare roads that spawn these rare buildings. We can do a whole bunch of stuff, spawning light fixtures around here, different objects and things uh, to, to build out the scene, if you will, and uh, creating rare structures that, you know, barely like rarely spawn in basically and stuff like that and based off of last episode if we were to copy this whole data pack and paste it into a world um this will be spawning i'm not going to show you guys that in this video because it is going to work we've already proved that in the previous episode once we build this out some more then yes i will be moving it over there and everything should work but uh, other than that that is it for this episode hopefully you guys did enjoy please remember that you are deeply appreciated be safe be kind and i will see you in the next one